What's going on everyone? It's Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware and I want you guys to meet Minesweeper, this $450 mixed gaming computer that you can build yourself and avoid high RAM prices and high video card prices. Right now, the upscaled market prices for a lot of computer hardware makes it hard to build a budget gaming computer that will give you a lot for your money, so I think this might be the solution to that problem. If you guys haven't already, I highly recommend watching my tips and tricks video on how to build a budget computer for about 500 bucks or less during the current market state because this build takes a lot of tips from that video. With that being said, the point of this computer build is to avoid high prices without losing too much performance and maintaining a decent upgrade path. And I think this computer completes all of those check marks, but let's see the parts and you guys can decide for yourself. And lastly, just as a disclaimer, I could have made this computer build a little bit cheaper if I actively deal hunted and I used my local classifieds. Now, if either of those are options for you, then use them. Use as many deals as you possibly can to make your computer build as cheap as possible without sacrificing too much performance. I made it a personal decision to go a little bit vanilla on the deals just so you guys can get a rough ballpark estimate of the average price of this computer build. So, without any further ado, let's jump into the components. First things first, I picked up a Xeon 1230 V1 processor from eBay for 80 bucks with a stock cooler. Now these Xeons are essentially i7 processors without integrated graphics and often fly under the radar for many buyers, making them great investments without breaking the bank. The specific version I bought runs 200 megahertz slower than the i7-2600, but provides near identical specifications minus TDP. Basically, you're getting locked Sandy Bridge i7 performance for 80 bucks. Not too shabby in my opinion. A reason why I chose the Xeon E3 series chip is because it works on cheap mainstream motherboards. I picked up a standard $40 LGA1155 motherboard from eBay. Not only does it support the Xeon 1230, but it also supports Ivy Bridge processors, so you have the option to make an incremental upgrade to something like an i7-3770 in the future. You can also pick up Z77 motherboards, but they're more expensive than I can recommend on eBay, so if you're interested in overclocking, you can try your local classifieds. The biggest financial save occurred because of the RAM. I picked up 8GB of DDR3 memory for $37, a very refreshing price compared to the standard 70 to 80 bucks for DDR4 memory today. It's nothing flashy by any means, there isn't a heat spreader and it's clocked at the standard 1600MHz, but it will get the job done. The motherboard supports up to 16GB of memory, so I can always upgrade in the future. I picked up a brand new 1TB 7200 RPM hard drive from eBay for $31 shipped. White label and mixed hard drives often go for around 35 bucks on eBay with a 1 year warranty and perform just as well as the regularly priced $45 hard drives found elsewhere. Used 1TB hard drives usually go for around 25 bucks so you can save even more money if you're on a stricter budget. Just remember the risks when purchasing used storage devices. I picked up the GTX 1060 3GB video card for only 190 bucks. This card, though small, packs a punch and often goes for under $200 nowadays. It's a great choice if you want more power than the 1050Ti without going too far over budget. Combined with its efficiency, it's a great card that offers great 1080p gaming performance and should complement the Xeon CPU very well. And lastly, we have the case and the power supply. I chose the Roswell Galaxy 3 for the case as it was only 24 bucks at the time of purchase, provides expandability and support, and still has an alright design. The power supply I picked up, albeit do kind of regret, is the Corsair VS500, a 500 watt standard 80 plus white certified power supply for 40 bucks. It definitely was not the best decision considering the other options around the same price, but it will work fine with the computer build. The total for the computer came down to $444. Assembling the computer was very quick and very easy, and I experienced no issues with the Rosal case. After assembling everything together, it powered on on the first try, so I loaded an unactivated Windows 10 64-bit, completely free, and there's a link in the description if you're interested in free Windows 10. I loaded all of my games and benchmarks, and then I commenced my gaming. 
As a baseline, I have my Ryzen 7 1800X system with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 2400 MHz and the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte to compare to Minesweeper. It should give you an idea of the performance difference between a current generation platform and an older generation platform. All games tested were at 1080p using a variety of settings. I decided to take a more realistic approach to benchmarking just so you guys can get a more realistic idea of the differences between the two games at 1080p and if you're building a computer of this nature chances are you are going to be gaming at 1080p so I'm trying to get the widest pool of people possible. But without further ado, here are the benchmarks of the $450 gaming computer Minesweeper and the comparison to the Ryzen 7 system. As you can see, Minesweeper does pretty well. It gives you solid 1080p gaming performance, and although it does lose to the Ryzen 7 system in the minimums and a little bit in the average, it does hold its own very well, and it maintains pretty solid efficiency too, if that matters to you. Although this is all true, it does come with a few downfalls. The first downfall is platform upgradability. The fastest processor available if you choose this route is the i7-3770K, and while it still performs very well for its age, it will not have the same longevity as processors on the AM4 or LGA 1151 platforms. You're limited to Ivy Bridge performance and 8 CPU threads. And secondly, you lack certain platform features. The platform also limits you to certain features and excludes others. You can only use 16GB of DDR3 memory on this specific motherboard, and USB 3.1, NVMe, and M.2 SSDs are not natively supported. Although custom BIOS updates and adapters are available to remedy the situation, most of the features will not run at their full advertised speed. So if you're looking to build a gaming computer for about 450-ish bucks, then this could be a great option for you. Though, if you are going to do that, I recommend waiting at least until next week, simply because of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. There are plenty of great deals during Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and if you stay updated on sites such as Slick Deals or Reddit's uh, subreddit, build a PC sales and you probably saw some of the amazing few that have come through the past week or so and they're probably only going to get better within the next three or four days. And I think I should end on the note that this is just an option for you. You definitely do not have to build it. That's what my job is to build it and to benchmark it so you guys can get an idea of whether or not this is a viable option or route for you to use. Of course, if this doesn't interest you, then you can always go back to the mainstream platform such as Ryzen or Coffee Lake. Those are also great options. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, then leave a like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of you Americans out there. And for all of you non-Americans, happy non-Thanksgiving, I guess. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.